Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with part one of my October 2017 book haul. I've bought a lot of books in the last couple weeks, guys. Like, a lot. 24 of them to be exact. <laughs> that includes two physical books that came in the mail, so um, yeah. To make sure this video is not super duper long, I'm not going to get into too much detail about what all these books are about. I'll give you a little bit of a description of the book or some details about the book. And as per usual, all the books that I talk about will be linked in the description box below. So please feel free to go check them out for yourself if they sound interesting to you. So starting off, also pretty much all these books, I'll mention the ones that I didn't, I paid, I got them on sale, essentially every single one. Um, so the first one is Murder Wears Mittens, and this is by Sally Goldenblom, Goldenbaum, excuse me. This is the first book in the Seaside Knitters Society. I was super excited to see this one on um, an ebook deal because I think the ebook is almost $9. And I've had it on my wish list for a while and I saw it drop down to like $2. And I'm like, yes, please. So this is a cozy mystery about um, knitting, essentially. Um, the next book is Race Against Time by Sharon Sala. Um, this is a standalone novel. It is a romantic suspense novel, and again, I got on sale. Sharon Saul is a great author. I highly recommend her. Um, the next book is Lassoed by B.J. Daniels. This is a Harlequin intrigue novel. I'm kind of doing some of this off the top of my head without looking. Um, another one that was on sale. It's rare to come across B.J. Daniels' books on sale because she is a very prolific author, and her books can be a bit pricey, even the intrigue novels and stuff like that. They very rarely go on sale, so when I saw this one on sale, I immediately scooped it up. Um, next up is A Home of Her Own by Brenda Novak. Um, this is book number, I think it's four, four in the Dundee, Idaho series. Uh, this is a Harlequin Super Romance. It has been republished with a different cover, so keep that in mind if you're looking for it on Amazon. Um, it is just a contemporary romance novel. Um, next up is Rescued by the Highland Warrior by Michelle Willingham. Willingham, excuse me. This is a novella, and this is a Harlequin historical novella. That guy's very intense looking, isn't he? I got this, and I was showing the cover to my friends, and I'm like, look at this. Doesn't he kind of remind you of Captain Jack Sparrow? And my friends are like, no. He looks like Orlando Bloom's character in Pirates of the Caribbean, and I can kind of see that too, but he's very intense, don't you think? But yes, I didn't realize it until I was adding this to Goodreads, that it is a novella, so that's fine. And I also believe that this is a medieval historical romance, so that's a little different. Um, next up is Striking Distance by Deborah Webb. This is book number 16 in the Colby Agency series. This is a romantic suspense novel. Um, the Colby Agency is an agency of detectives and investigators, and like I said, this is book 16. There are a lot of books after this one, too. Most of them are published under the Harlequin category. I think they're either romantic suspense or intrigue. I can't remember what book series they're published under, but um, these are really, really good. And Deborah Webb's a really great author. Um, this one was published, of course, outside of the contemporary or of the um, category romance books. But again, it was on sale, so I had to pick it up. Um, next up is one that I actually got for free. I got the Harlequin newsletter. They send out about a newsletter every week, and they show some of the new books that are coming out. And I saw this one and it ticked all of the boxes for me. Um, it is called I'll Be Home for Christmas by Debbie Maycomer, Brenna Novak, and Cheryl Woods. This is a brand new publication. I'm pretty sure these are all brand new novellas, so this is an anthology. I don't think that they follow like the same, like they, I don't think the three stories go together. I think they're just three separate Christmas no, uh, novel, three separate Christmas novellas put into the anthology. But I mean, those are fantastic authors, and I saw this come up, and I used my Harlequin points, and I got it for free, so that made me extra happy. Um, the next book, I decided to do the um, buy three, get one free sale at Harlequin, and I picked up um, a couple books. The first one is The Baby Merger by Yvonne Lindsay. This is a Harlequin um, desire novel, and it is book three, is it book three in the Little Secret series? Um, a contemporary romance. Um, the next one is Blind, or, or excuse me, sorry. The next book is The Maverick's Return by Marie Farinella. Um, this is a Harlequin Western romance series. This used to be the Harlequin American romance series, but they changed it to Western romance. 
and this is book number four in the Montana Mavericks, The Great Family Roundup series. Um, she's a great author. I had to pick it up. Um, the next one um, is called Christmas Amnesia, and it's by Laura Scott. This is a love-inspired suspense novel, so it's a Christian fiction novel. Um, and yeah, it looked really cute. It's book number three in the Callahan Confidential series. Um, the next book that I got, oh, is an older book. This is a silhouette romance book, and they haven't published these, I think, since 2008 or 2009. And it's called Blind Date Marriage, and it's by Fiona Harper. And they do still sell these on the Harlequin website, so I decided to pick it up because I love the backlist books, too. Um, next up, another um, contemporary romance novel. This one is called Sweet Rare Cottage by Denise Hunter. Um, I saw, I'm sorry, I feel horrible, I don't remember her name, but the, the girl who, or the woman who does Girly Girl Bookworm booktube channel, who's fantastic if you haven't checked her out, she read this book earlier in the summer, because I'm a little behind on booktube videos, at the end of August, and she enjoyed it, so I'm glad that I was able to pick it up at a reduced price. Um, next up. Somebody to Love by Kristen Higgins. This is book three in the Gideon's Cove series. You guys know if you watched my wrap-up, I read books one and two in September, so I'm looking forward to getting on to book number three. Next book is a cozy mystery, which looked totally adorable, and I had to pick it up. It's called Death by Pumpkin Spice, and this is by Alex Erickson. This is book number one in the bookstore cafe, or oh, excuse me, it's book number three in the Bookstore Cafe Mystery Series. Again, as I said, a cozy mystery. There's a number of cozy mysteries that I actually got in the last week or so. Um, if you go and you check the Harlequin, the Harlequin, if you go and check the Kindle monthly deals, there are a lot of cozy mysteries right now on sale this month for um, the Kindle. So if you're into cozy mysteries, please go check it out. I grabbed a bunch of them that looked really cute. So the next uh, book, which is Nicosi Mystery, this is a romantic, um, uh, contemporary romance novel, and it's called The Strawberry Hearts Diner by Carolyn Brown. I mentioned this book a couple months back in a pre-order that I had originally had on pre-order, but often, sometimes what happens with pre-orders is because you don't pay for them until they're actually released, I do try and remember to go through and check when it gets close to the date, um, and money-wise, it's just not something I could afford at the time, so I ended up canceling the pre-order. But then it came out for like 99 cents, so immediately, of course, I picked it up. Um, the next book is Trusting uh, Bryson. This is by Melanie Shaw. This is book number three or two. Sorry, I was way off. It's book number six in the Wishing Well Texas book. Wishing Well Texas book series. Um, a contemporary romance, if you couldn't tell that from that, that rather steamy cover. Um, the next one, and winner for cutest title in all the books I've bought over the last couple weeks, is Her M for Murder. And this is by um, T. C. Lo Tempio. This is book number one in the Cat Rescue Mystery series. Again, one of the cozy mysteries that are currently on sale for the Kindle. Isn't that cover adorable too? Oh, I just love it. Um, I love a good cozy mystery. Um, next book, this is the other one that, or this is, I think, one of the only ones, one of the only two that I paid full price for, but, um, I saw this one come up on Harlequin, and again, um, because I am part of the Rewards Points program, every month they have different specials. So, like, for example, you bought this book in the month of October from any retailer, Amazon, you know, Barnes & Noble, bought it at your local Walmart, whatever. <clears throat> you submit the receipt in October, you get 4,000 bonus points. That equals two ebooks. So essentially, I got two free ebooks for buying this. And it is A Snow Country Christmas, and it is book number four in the Carsons of Mustang Creek series. It's by Linda Lehall Miller. Um, I love her writing. She does great westerns, great Christmas stories. And I didn't mind paying full price, again, because I was essentially getting two free ebooks with the deal. Um, I can justify just about anything, people, believe me. Um, the next book is uh, A Deep Grave. Is that what it's called? I didn't think that's what it was called, but that's what I wrote down. Bear with me. A Deeper Grave. See, I knew it was wrong. A Deeper Grave by Deborah Webb, another Deborah Webb book. This is book number two in the Shades of Death series. This is a romantic suspense series. I bought book number one, I think, last month on a deal. This one came up, so, of course, why not pick it up? I'll get to them all eventually. Um, <laughs> next book. 
Um, I don't remember where I heard about this book, but it went on my wish list, and then I did the whole, you know, um, sort it to see of price drops, and this one had a price drop to like 99 cents, I think. So I picked it up. And it's The Lady Traveler's Guide to Scoundrels and Other Gentlemen. And that's by Victoria Alexander, and it's book number one in the Lady Traveler's Society. Um, this is a historical romance, historical fictional mystery. Looked really cute. That cover is just stunning. And yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that one. It's so weird because historicals was something I really wasn't into for the longest time, but now this year, I seem to have really, like, found my groove for historical romance novels, and I'm really, really enjoying them. Um, next book, I talked about this book very briefly if you watched um, the last video I posted, my book club news video. Um, the Smart Bitches, Trashy, um, Smart Bitches Trashy Books podcast and website does a um, weekly newsletter, and it used to be that they'd send you out this newsletter of all the great um, price, like, all the books on sale, and um, they can't do that anymore for whatever reason, um, but they now have them on their website, so if you subscribe to the newsletter, you're going to get a link to their website, which will again show you the exact same thing. Well, this book was posted at the top because it's written by Sarah Wendell, who is the creator of that website and podcast. And it's called Lighting the Flames, and it is a Hanukkah romance novel. So unlike the typical Christmas novels that we see a lot of this time of, or in December, this is a Hanukkah story, and I'm super, super excited. I did pay full price for it, but I think it was only $3.99 Canadian. So really, really reasonable for, for an ebook. And this is an older, I think this was published in 2014 originally, so it's a few years old. But if that's something that'd be interesting to you, definitely check it out. And the last ebook that I purchased is The Truth About Love and Dukes by Laura Lee Girk. Um, this is book number, sorry, I should have had this clicked on already. Book number one in the Dear Lady True Love series. I read um, this author in the anthology, um, um, Four Weddings and a Sixpence anthology that I read in September that I really, really enjoyed. So now I'm looking for these authors, and this one was on that newsletter that I just talked about. So I decided to scoop it up because I think it was like 99 cents or something. So yeah, so those are all the ebooks that I've bought. Um, let's get into the two physical books and they are both middle grade books. Um, one is more of a reference book, if you will. So I'll show you that one first. This book I bought when it was originally published and in all the moves and all the years it has gone missing. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up because I found it on thrift books and that is The Complete Guide to the Babysitter's Club. And it says absolutely, positively everything you've always wanted to know about the Babysitter's Club. With a new updated full color map of Stony Brook inside, I mean seriously, as a collector, I had to pick this up. Now it's not in the greatest of condition, but I don't care. Um, someone, someone loved this book as far as I'm concerned. But what I was really happy about is the map was still intact. So there's the map, kind of hard to see. But over here on this side, there's a key and it tells you where all the houses are. Now obviously this isn't 100% detailed, obviously, but I guess it just shows you in conjunction to other people like, you know, Christy lives up here, sorry, and the school is over here, you know what I mean. But this book is, research went into this book, people, so I gotta show you this really, really quickly. Um, so it goes by the contents. Club Facts, BSC members, so each of the members of the Babysitter's Club, including um, Logan and Shannon, and Abby, who comes in later, just before book number 100. BSC family members, um, clients, other people in town, like other people like students and teachers, and other kids, um, other adults, merchants at the mall, um, places like towns and streets, um, things like different um, books and magazines and stuff that are talked about. Beyond Stony Brook, it says, like, in California, Dawn in California with the We Love Kids Club, when they travel to Hawaii, um, uh, you know, all these other, in New York City, Stacy's Friends, um, and all the different places that they've traveled to. But, so, I just have to show you because this just blows me away. Um, so, for example, I'll just show you guys. Claudia Kishi. So, here's Claudia's chapter, right? So you get, and you guys are not going to be able to see this because my camera is trash and does not focus, but it gives like date of birth, her age as of what book, like as of book number 10 on, she was 13 years old, the narrator of all of these books, um, her position in the club, and then it goes to like current address, 
Um, personal info, physical description, it says, for example, 5 foot 4 inches, second generation Japanese American. Then in parentheses it says number 92, page 19. That means that description came from book number 92, page 19. That is throughout the entire book. So you pick any random fact here. Maureen McGill, who I believe is Stacy's mother. I just flipped to this just at random. Job is a buyer at Bel Air's department store. Number 76, page 5. You know, like, and it goes through, like, charges and, I mean, towns and streets in Stony Brook. Like, really? Um, like, it says Bertrand Drive, where Granny and Pop Pop live. You know, like, it's just, it's, it's the most, <laughs> it's so comprehensive. But again, I bought it not for any kind of research. I'm never going to read this cover to cover. But it's just fun, and it's just so much fun to have. And I do have to admit, of all the Baby Search Club covers that there ever were, that is probably my very favorite picture of the girls, of the girls in the club. I don't know what it is about that drawing. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And in all honesty, I would love to get, like, a print of that to put on the wall. You know, no, I know I'm not 13. I'm 38. But I still think, like, if I had, like, a room for all my books and stuff, that that would be adorable. Uh, you know, or just to have this cover. Like, you know, I just love that picture. So, middle grade book number one. And the second one is also a Babysitter's Club book. And this one, I'm excited, but I'm disappointed. When I saw this was coming out, I immediately put it on pre-order with Amazon. And it showed up this week. And this is the fifth graphic novel, uh, Dawn and the Impossible 3. The reason I'm, the two reasons I'm disappointed in this. One, they changed the, um, the graphic novel, like the person who did the graphic novel. The, the original four books were done by um, Raina Ligermeyer. She does uh, the best-selling author of Smile. And her drawings, if I may, are just stunning. Like, that's what really, truly made me fall in love with these books. Like, look at them. I just love the way the people look. I love the drawings. If you guys have seen these, I mean... You know, the images of the girls in the club, it's just so utterly perfect as to, you know, how they look. They're Stacy and Claudia. Like, it's great. I'm not as happy with the drawings in this book. I'm sorry. Um, you know, I just don't like the style as much. They're still kind of cartoonish, but they almost seem a little harsher. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not loving them. Um, they're not bad, but they're not great. Um, you know, and everybody's different. Other people might prefer this over the other one, and that's fine, and I get that. Um, they, it seems a little darker. I don't know why, but it does. The other thing that kind of rather annoyed me about this is the book I just read, which was Hello, Mallory, book number 14 in the series. Mallory joins the Babysitter's Club in this book. This was book number five. Mallory doesn't join to book number 14. So they merged Mallory's book with Dawn's, with this book. And that, as, as a true Babysitter's Club fan, that annoys me. I'm sorry. Um, I really wish they would have stayed true to the stories for these. And I'm still upset that they skipped book number two because that would have made an amazing graphic novel. You know, if you were going to do it, just release the first five books. Release them true to the books, to, true to the original text. And don't try and change the story because, like, I was flipping through this and I'm like, why is Mallory at a Babysitter's Club meeting? And then I kind of read it and then I realized obviously they had to change the text of the book in order to bring Mallory into the babysitters club and I don't know I was just really really disappointed in it um you know, not really disappointed in it. I'm glad I have it but it's not what I was hoping it was going to be so that is a disappointment anyway guys this video is far too long as it is so I am going to let you guys go um I hope you enjoyed this book haul Please let me know in the comments below um, any books that you've bought recently, gotten any good deals. Like I said, if you're into cozy mysteries, please go check out the Amazon, um, the Kindle monthly deals, and check out all the um, cozy mysteries that are currently on sale. I didn't buy all of them right now. I have a special other little sub um, um, wish list on Amazon that when I, I go through all the books that are on sale for that month and I stick them all on that wish list, all the ones that I want, and then throughout the month I might buy one or two. Or 12. You know, whatever. Anyway, guys, I will talk to you in my next video. Until then, take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye.